What's going on, everybody? Am I recording? I am. What's going on? Okay, so it's the next day, or a couple days actually, and we're gonna go ahead and fit the uh, 4L80 in. Uh, we got the flywheel in place, or the flex wheel, flex plate, not flywheel. It's not a manual. Uh, and so, as we said, we're gonna we went ahead and cut off that ear right there. So here's the here's the piece was here. Boom. Sanded it down, made it look pretty, and now we're gonna do the same thing over here and just lop that ear right off and clean it up and everything like that so that it looks good. And then we'll go ahead and put the sensors back on because I went ahead and painted those. Um, something about that, where is it? Yeah, here it is. Something about green and gold just looks good. And you're not really gonna see it anyways, but hey, it looks pretty good. I like it. Um, and we'll still have to hopefully be able to get access to put in the um, those fittings right there for the for the cool the, the oil coolers because I don't have them yet and I'm waiting on them. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. We're, hopefully, we can still get to it. If not, we'll you know we'll see what happens. Like I said, um, but we gotta get that off, put all these pieces back in, and then we can test fit it. All right, so as you saw, I went ahead and painted it too, and there we go. It looks like it was supposed to be that way. I mean, it's nice and smooth. We took care of it with that, and I mean, like I said, looks completely factory now. It's almost like it was supposed to be that way now. Uh, we still got some mountain holes. If we decide to put that plate back on, we're gonna have to modify it because you know it would have came up to here somewhere. So we'll have to look into that, but. Uh, you know, other than that, uh, we're good. So, look who's in, inside the truck. And it literally was uh, a matter of hammering out that seam. And then I went ahead, just be sure, I wasn't sure if it was going to be in the way or not, but the that little hump we talked about that was right there in the line, like as soon as it came down, I just went ahead and hammered as much of that as I could, just, you know, so it'd be out of the way. And I don't think it's actually touching it, but so this is how it went um, for you that are, or go and do it yourself. Now it got almost there, like the, the little knobs, little knobbies right up in there. They were just a little bit above, you know, because they're on the engine. So they were a little bit above the holes on the on the uh, transmission side. And so literally all I did was I used the weight of the truck to help kind of like push down on it. And uh, it, it pushed it in place and yeah, got her. Got her all nice and in. I still got, I'm waiting on the cross member. Uh, it's supposed to take a little bit of time, but whenever you are doing the like with the bolts with the flywheel or flex plate, I mean not flywheel, uh, and the bolts for the torque converter, you're always going to want to use some Loctite. And so, you know, but I, I like this little stick thing Michael has. It's pretty awesome. You can just sit there and you get a little bit on there, you know, and then you just. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yep, and you just stick the bolts up in there. I mean, you know how that works. I mean, let's... yeah. So, because you want to Loctite everything, especially when it's dealing with this right here, because this is something that's going to be spinning regularly. I actually need to pull this down. There we go. That way I can take my. Oh, damn it! The wrench just hit me. Oh, that hurt. Ow. Oh. Dang, that's not... All right, hang on, I gotta find that. And then uh, once you got it tightened down, then you just go ahead and, uh, you know, or well, once you've got it uh, in place, uh, then you go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten this down and, and then uh, I'll be done. And we can uh, worry about tightening or measuring for a drive shaft. I've been looking around trying to find me a cross member for the past week now. And everywhere I look, they are back order two to three months. And I just, I can't wait that long. So I'm just going to build one. So I actually have some metal that's been lying around. So I have this nice thick 
stuff right here it's a little rusty on it's just an exterior rust though i'll be able to grind that off and it'll be just fine and i got some of this nice thick steel right here it got to come a little bit thinner probably not gonna probably won't even use this but then we got these nice brackets right here because my thoughts is is you know cut off a section something like this right here uh that's where the transmission would actually bolt to and then we'd have these brackets here you know maybe something like this maybe i don't know what the i don't know what the spacing is going to be like up in there that way the exhaust has a pathway to come through and you know i can do this with the other side as well and i don't know what the hell is wrong the dogs love to bark at absolutely nothing and then just in case uh we got some uh steel there some plate steel uh but i think we're going to be fine with these things this and this um i also have some uh angled steel but like i don't know if i'm actually gonna need that we'll see how we're gonna mount it up to the uh the actual uh frame of the truck but i'm thinking that i can use one of these things because it's already got the bolts in it and because we're, we're just going to go straight we're not going to go back to the original mounting position uh because it's you know here's transmission mounts and then the original ones are back over here a little bit so we'd have to go back and there's 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 cross member right there so we'll just go uh well, well like i said we're gonna go take a look at that here in just a second okay so underneath here b we're not gonna have you barking this whole time buddy okay so that's the transmission mounting point obviously so it's got everything's gonna have to originate from right there um problem is, is if you look straight that way it has that curve right there at the frame so that's going to be a bit of a challenge um, which may lead us to sending it back over that way because as you see there's a mounting point right there and we could we could work that I mean honestly that's not too terrible um, and then right here we have the other mounting point is right here as opposed to you know everything's over you can't see it but yeah yeah see it's right there so and if we try to come over here we got that the problem is is one of those brackets like we had isn't gonna fit right here and so we'll have to think of something else um we might take it and like cut it down or something or we'll, i'll figure out this side that side's gonna be fairly easy to figure out this side on the other hand is going to be a bit more of a challenge but let's start off with what we're what we know we got to do we got to cut that center section so i'm thinking yeah because that's the center right there so we want it to be even on either side so we can go with a 10 inch piece but we can come all the way over we can do it as much as a as a one foot yeah like a foot long piece that way it's long enough and it gets we're not using too much of those brackets you know it's mostly that that large piece of steel that's going to be doing it, most of the work and then it'll just be a matter of, of sending it back over this way from right there that ain't too bad so let's cut this piece let's cut this piece that's going to go right here and go ahead and clean it up and then we'll see about how we're going to run it over there. We'll go ahead and make the holes and mounting spots so that we can actually mount it physically up to right here. And then we can actually see how everything's going to, how we're going to tie everything in to here. Okay, so this is going to be a good start. As you can see, I got the single hole on that side because my motor mount has the option. I was like, do I want to do two holes or one hole? Well, as thick as this is, I went with... Uh, the single hole and I cut this out with an angle grinder and drilled the four corners out that way I have access to get up in there with the socket hopefully uh, so yeah we're gonna go ahead and mount this in place and then we can kind of test fit and see how everything's gonna work okay so this is where we're at at this present time we got our bar going across and then we got it angled going this way and I'm working on this one over here so as you can see I got this mounted right here in the original position and I'm gonna run a single one from here all the way to here and it's it's a fairly stout piece of uh, of iron so I'm not concerned it's actually probably thicker than these two pieces so uh, and then uh, after that we'll work on that but you know gotta sit there and I'm probably gonna run some bolts through it at first just to get it positioned just right 
and tighten it down and then I can take it off and I'll weld it in position. So for right now, we're gonna do some bolts because there's holes right there already and I just gotta put bolts or holes in the other piece. Uh, like I said, it's just gonna be to line it up properly because then I can tighten it down and take it out. Uh, we're gonna do that on both sides. Check it out, finished product uh, for the most part. I think I might try and grind this point off right here because it is kind of sharp. Uh, other than that though, it's gonna get painted. Check it out, went ahead and put in our initials because we made it. So yeah, Michael's been messing with this TIG machine. Hopefully we can uh, get it properly here soon, but. Didn't matter. Yeah, oh, yes. I still got my goggles on. I look like a funny, like a weirdo, but yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this, get it in there, go ahead and lower the transmission down, and yeah, we'll see how if it's gonna hold it. I mean, it should, it looks very strong. Mm, look at that. Dang. I mean, okay, it doesn't look the best. I like the gold, but uh, yeah, it's gonna work. It's very strong, very, very strong. Uh, these are very thick, half inch or, or ish somewhere around there but yeah it's nice and strong it's not gonna break literally all it has to do is hold up though like it's not trying to hold things from going that way though so i'm not too worried about that so let's go ahead and get this installed that way we can set the get the transmission off of the um yeah jack which is that's where it's on right now and we can say that we can officially say that there's a 4L80 in the S10. Let's do it. All right, so before y'all get to see, let's go ahead and just lower that down. Sorry, oh, it was almost like a revealing. As soon as that thing went down, you got blinded. But let's check out, see how it's holding up. Now it's all the weight is on there. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's holding up. Look at that. Looks good. All pretty and everything. It's 100% uh, tightened down, and I can officially say that I have a 4L80 in here. Uh, I still got to wait on the jumper harness. Uh, it'll go from that connection right there, uh, and it'll plug directly into the uh, over here on this end. I won't have to do any repanning or anything like that. I will have to get a new, uh, like a new tune. Um, I'm gonna look, see what I got, uh, make sure I don't have anything that has a 4L80 attached to it with a six liter, or even just a 4L80, because you can always do segment swaps. Um, you can actually, well, for me, I have HB tuners, so I can actually send two files over to the support uh, web uh, email and they're supposed to be able to uh, do a segment swap for me. I'm gonna see if I can do it. If I can't, then obviously I'm just gonna send it to them. But, I mean, <laughs> that is awesome. That is so awesome. And it looks like everything's working out great. The exhaust is still out of the way. It's got the ability to still run the, the duels. Cause could you imagine if I'd have just ran it straight from here back? I'd have been hitting all of that. And this is still gonna have space right here. I gotta put the other exhaust pipes in here. They're gonna come right down here and uh yeah man i am so happy that is that is awesome still gotta measure the drive shaft but i gotta get a yoke that goes in the back of here because when you're measuring the drive shaft you're measuring from the yoke to the other yoke down there so i gotta i gotta get a couple things for that and i'll do a video on how to measure that up getting it done everything seeing how it, you know the whole process but uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna wrap it up by uh, going ahead and putting all this stuff back in that you don't care about me w watching me do, like putting all the exhaust back in, because you don't care about none of that. And it looks like we're still gonna have pretty good access to get to these uh, these uh, fittings right here for the uh, uh, the cooler, which I need to start hooking up because I'm but I'm still waiting on those two fittings that go right there. I got some 90 A and eight uh, eight A and fittings, blah blah blah, whatever, you know. And so that's going to be in the next video, but hey, it's in. And uh, one other thing, I also have to pull this this pan off, and because I got this from the junkyard, they always pop a little hole in the bottom right there, which is a steel pan. So I just pop this off, clean it up, and weld that up, and we'll never even know. Maybe I'll paint the whole 
oil pan black or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but... <sighs> Man, that has been a lot of work. And, uh, but it's worth it though, because uh, that's just, that's one more thing that I'm not going to have to worry about. Uh, whenever I hop in it and drive it down the road, the transmission is going to be one of the last things to think about. The transmission, the rear end, um, I mean, <clears throat> all of it. The engine, freshly rebuilt, so it's nice and new, as long as I keep oil in it, but it doesn't leak, so as long as I keep up with the oil changes, there's no problems there. And, uh, I mean, everything on this truck should be fully reliable. Um, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with this dipstick, if it's going to even work, or if I'm going to have to get something else, but... You know, that's that's future Patrick's problem. I like to, you know, how you know how we are. We like to dump it off on our future selves. So, uh, like I said, this is gonna, that's going to be it for this video because we are still waiting on parts. Um, and, yeah, thank you guys for watching.